Okay, so if you if you know about UV mapping, um, perhaps you you know do it in other applications and just want to know how to do it in uh, <coughs> excuse me in Blender, then uh, you can skip the section and get onto the practical stuff uh, in the next bit. Um, if, however, you're new to UV mapping, I'm just going to go through a bit of the whys. So, uh, UV mapping is important uh, because it's the uh, the process you go through to enable the texturing process. There are other uses for UVs, but in general, that's you know that's what I use it for. So, I've just set up a little demonstration. So, I've exported my uh, sword here and uh, I've imported it into Substance Painter and over here we have a UV map and here's our sword and I've got a paint layer and uh, so if I draw out on this you'll see that it's not just painting where I paint it's painting all around and you know that can be desirable sometimes but in this case not so why is it doing that? Well, it's doing that because the UV map is flat. Um, there are pieces that are underneath pieces. You can't see all of the geometry. So it's, you know, putting the same texture over different areas. Um, it's also deformed. So you will see that I've got quite a nice smooth stroke here, uh, but here it's kind of veering all over the place. And that's because the UV map currently is deformed. You know, polygons are bigger than they should be. They're not in proportion. They're all over the place. So it's going to be difficult to UV map. It, sorry, it's going to be difficult to texture. It's not going to be difficult to map. Um, so what we aim to do is give a nice flat 2D representation of our 3D model so that when we texture, we have as much control and as much um, you know resolution as we can get from a map. Um, sometimes you have to make compromises, but you know that's life. Uh, just another quick demonstration. You know, if I were doing this in a two D program, uh, which I can kind of simulate by doing it here. Oops, just want to make my brush a bit smaller. Um, you know, I'd have no idea where that stroke was, uh, let alone that you know it's overlapped and it's wrapped around that bit down there and what's this bit uh, I have no idea let's uh, zoom down and just sort of paint in there and if I have a look around I should find out no, it's on that cross piece and goodness only knows where the blade is uh, I can't even paint on it at all so what we ought to do is make a lovely 2d representation of our 3d model with as little as distortion as possible and as few as seams as possible and that's the general principles okay so i hope that made sense um, in the next video we're gonna uh, just have a look at tidying up the model uh, just to prepare it for uv so i'll talk to you then okay so we've got our model and um, you now want to go to the UV stage. But before I do that, uh, I do a bit of an integrity check on the model. Uh, first of all, I want it to be as kind of low poly as I, I can have it, I guess. And uh, for that, I'm just gonna have a look over the model to see what I can delete, uh, what geometry I can remove. So first of all, uh, this vertical slice, whoops, I've got a, tool active sorry about that um, this vertical slice uh, isn't contributing to my shape in any way shape or form so I can delete it so if I press the delete key and just dissolve those edges that's uh, done that and up here uh, I've got these two lines going across the top which I haven't got on the bottom for some reason um, but they're not contributing to my shape they're just there so what I'm going to do is remove them so let's go alt and click on there and then shift alt to add to our selection and click on the other and then we'll delete and dissolve those edges there we go 
so I think that's uh, as much on there but have a look over uh, oh yeah there's some up here it's not to do with this anything it's more of a shape thing uh, I see that I've got a really flat tip here like it's broken off so what I'm going to do is just go to vertex mode I'll box click over the top there and then we'll move that up there we go that's a much nicer point looks better already okay so that's just done a bit of a tidy up uh, but now I like to do a, like a subdivision integrity test so if you want to subdivide this uh, which as a texturized you may well do uh, to get a nice um, baked normal out of it um, it's important to, that it keeps its shape so what I'm going to do is uh, add a subdivision modifier to this and as soon as I do that it should show up if I have any issues and it does and uh, there's something down here that is just really causing a problem so let's uh, see if we can examine that I'm going to turn this off so that I uh, can see it a bit better and then go to face select select a, a polygon uh, control L to select all the linked items all the linked polygons and vertices etc and then uh, shift H to hide everything else and if I zoom in a bit I can see that I've got a polygon on the bottom um, and that's an issue because when you subdivide a mesh uh, all the polygons within it are taken into account um, because obviously it's there therefore it's useful uh, but actually this one is not useful nobody can see it the only effect it's having is on the subdivision and because it affects all of the polygons around it um, it has an impact so what I'm going to do is delete it uh, so I've just hit the delete key and I'll delete that face and now it's empty and if I add that modifier back again uh, there it is you'll see that it stays where it should uh, because it's not affecting anything around it you know nothing has to be taken into account to you know smooth or subdivide that uh, that edge uh, other than that uh, we have this issue on the groove uh, where it's kind of deforming and smushing in so we'll fix that with a loop cut so I'm going to click on loop cut over here and then this time I'm going to click and hold my left mouse button and then move my mouse and that will allow me to slide this edge over so if I click and hold and then drag it down you'll see that as I drag it down that deformation starts to go away and that's what we call a brace so that's bracing the geometry so that it keeps its shape and uh, if you've let go and you you know you perhaps haven't gone too far far enough you can always use the factor on these uh, here to put it right so this would be negative 0.999999 let's get it really close you'll see I've, I've still got a little issue there which I do want to correct and all I need for that is a second brace so I'm going to point at the mesh and an edge and click and hold and drag that down and the closer I get down there the uh, less deformation we're going to have so again I can use my uh, factor down here just to push that as far as I can there we go okay so let's uh, have a look at the top so the top is really deformed so let's uh, let's do that as well so I'm going to point at my edge and click and hold and drag that up whoops something happened there I think I nudged a key let's undo so click and hold and drag that up until it gets to a point where you're happy I think somewhere around there I'm getting like a, a smoothing 
here of that uh, groove uh, but I'm not too unhappy about that and I think if I uh, put a loop around here that should do that job so it's click and hold and then just bring it in it's not actually doing any uh, anything there so I'm gonna control Z to undo that okay so let's pop another one up there see if it uh, makes it any nicer I don't think it is yeah perhaps a little bit okay so there we go let's uh, press W to go to our select mode and if we press Alt and H it will unhide the rest of our mesh so now uh, I have a sword which you know I've reduced some of the geometry which is terrific <coughs> uh, and I've also prepped it so that it will you know behave under subdivision um, um, conditions because the last thing we want is it for it to just collapse you know um, so yes that's that uh, in the next one we're going to start to actually do some UVing um, but I just think it's important to you know be aware that a model might not be perfect when you get it and sometimes you have to do some adjustments and it's better to do those before you start UVing okay so I will talk to you in the next section okay so let's have a look at some of the options we have for UV mapping so I'm going to go to the UV editing tab here and we can see that we've got our uh, sword in 3D on the right and a 2D image on the left and I've got um, x-ray mode on so I've just selected over everything and that's what my UV map looks like now because I've been tinkering um, you might not see that you'll probably see a, a few blocks um, so we have some options here we can do different things um, there are a few methods of UV mapping so in the right hand view I'm just going to middle mouse click in there to activate it I'm going to press the U key and then we have uh, unwrap smart unwrap light map, uh, light map pack follow active quads cube projection cylindrical projection and spherical projection so if I start from the top you'll see it looks pretty rubbish because actually um, I've got no seams defined and you know I require seams to do this so in the options down here uh, we do have a couple of options between angle based and conformal um, but you know we'll get to those a little bit when we start defining seams etc etc at the moment it's just a bit pointless so uh, other options then if I go to the smart project and I can enter an angle in here I believe the default is somewhere around 30 and click OK you'll see that it projects everything nice and flat because it's just looking at a view you know looking at it from the front the left the right etc etc calculating angles between faces and giving us a UV and it's uh, it's okay but in this case I don't think it's what I would use because it doesn't look right um, something about it isn't quite there you know I can identify some shapes and I can see that you know that's part of the blade but what are the other parts of the blade uh, I mean we can actually find that out if I go to face mode there and uh, control L yeah there it's all the bits of the blade and it, it's a bit you know it's all over the place it's not the clearest map in the world some models if they're kind of flat and blocky like a cube you know would work well with this but you know not this kind of thing so let's uh, just select everything again oops middle, not middle mouse left mouse there we go and use U um, the light map pack is a special one and not used for texturing 
and uh, so let's go down to the cube projection so the cube projection gives me some uh, control down here in terms of how big the cube it's going to use is and that changes the size of overall uh, we have connect aspect clip to bounds and scale to bounds scale to bounds is quite handy it gets it out but everything is overlapping itself you know it kind of looks like the sword um, but actually to texture on this would be really annoying because you know things are overlapping I can't see the front and the back at the same time again that's useful sometimes but not in this case okay so let's unwrap again and this time we use the cylind uh, cylindrical projection um, and we can change our options here so view on poles or align to object um, and this basically puts the cylinder around your model and looks at it from the sides and then uh, tries to work out what the UV should look like so we've got poles we can change and oops yeah depending upon the pole you change and the, the mode you select you might see your uh, object or your unwrapping uh, come out ever so slightly different uh, again we have a radius so I can update the radius and it will you know adapt accordingly again not suitable for this kind of shape because it's not just kind of up and down cylindrical great for a pipe you know terrific for maybe a uh, you know a wire but not for this kind of thing so um, in general I will always I will always use the unwrap just the straight unwrap uh, but to do that we need to define some seams and such like on our model and that's what we're going to do in the next video um, but before I do that I am going to do a projection map uh, so let's click U and go to smart project and I'm just going to update that a little bit and click OK and now I have uh, a map and I'm going to export my sword and you know have a look at how this map reacts compared to uh, an unwrapped map you know when we've finished so let's uh, just flip over to the modeling room I'm going to go to object mode with my cube selected file and export I'll just do an OBJ for the moment and uh, we'll call this one sword projection there we go uh, select uh, only selected OBJs yeah there we go export okay so when we come back we're gonna have to look at starting to define some um, seams on this to unwrap it in a in a nice way so I shall talk to you then okay so uh, as I said we need to define some seams on this and we can do this in the model room and I find it a little bit better because I've got a, a little bit more space to do it so we're in edit mode I'm gonna select edges and then I'm gonna try and uh, select these as easy as, as, as I can selecting is the worst bit in this especially if you've got an awkward model uh, so I've just selected a, a short edge up the top there and I'll press the full stop key and zoom in and then we'll alt click on the edge that goes right down the middle of the blade so that's going to be our uh, cut point our seam so we'll right click and mark it as a seam and when you click off to deselect you should see that that seam is now red indicating that well that edge is red indicating that it's a seam okay so we need some more seams so let's go and do that uh, I need to cut my pommel uh, piece kind of uh, on the front and the back so it's alt and then shift alt right click and mark seam not sharp there we go uh, I can put an edge 
down my handle uh, hilt so select that right click and mark seam now we'll do up here so I'm going to cut these ends off so alt click excuse me oh crumb set crept up on me <laughs> um, and then uh, we use shift alt click over here to add to our selection and then right click and mark seam okay so the last thing to do is to bisect the handle kind of front to back so for that I'm going to um, yeah sorry I was just thinking about hiding it or doing it in one piece we'll try it in one piece to start with uh, so no let's try it in two pieces then we'll try and be brave so alt click to uh, select that loop but then I don't need these pieces on the end so sorry I've uh, managed to mess that up so I'm just going to control what is going on alt click and then shift and deselect them there we go no control my brain was in another program it tends to do that okay so once you've got those selected it's right click and mark seam not sharp as I seem to want to do every time okay what else do we need to do so we've done that we've done that uh, we need to split our pommel uh, now normally I would put these in the most inaccessible place uh, but for this uh, I'm going to put it I would normally put it on the bottom because that's where it's going to be most hidden uh, but actually up here it's mo it, most of it's obscured by the handle so I'm going to select those two across there and mark those as a seam okay so now we can go back to our EV editing room and I've got uh, x-ray mode on go to face mode or face select mode and it won't let me select anything which is lovely uh, what's going on with that ah no it will just a glitch hmm. okay so I'll click L to select all of the blade and then we'll unwrap so it's uh, U and unwrap and now we get something that looks like a blade so let's uh, repeat that on the other pieces um, so let's click off select a bit click L to select everything and then whoops you can right click and unwrap or you can press U and unwrap uh, so that's not too bad uh, so let's select the handle right click and unwrap and let's select the uh, pommel piece oops press the wrong button uh, so it's L no I keep pressing K there we go and unwrap now you might have noticed while we were doing this that there is all sorts of stuff going on here uh, that doesn't look right so let's uh, just unwrap this so right click unwrap so everything's a little bit deformed if I press uh, Alt and H now and that will show me everything you can see that you know the blade is too wide compared to its height you know the circular bits are not right and there's a reason for that um, that's because there is some weird scaling in my object so to correct that I'm just going to go to object mode and uh, open up my little tab here with the N key and under scale you'll see these aren't set to 1 it means that somewhere along the line I've scaled it and it, it's representing those scales if I set this back to 1 um, it's going to deform and not look right but what we need to do is just apply that scaling we're essentially going to reset the scaling to be 1 the dimensions won't change but these will all be one and this is currently applying to our UV mapping which is making it look weird 
So with the object selected under the object menu we have apply and then location rotation scale obviously rotation and location are fine uh, so it's object apply scale and you'll see that resets to one and now if we go to edit mode again and uh, with all our pieces selected we can right click and unwrap and now they look like proper shapes you know they look like they're a part of this model they look representative of you know what you're looking at so uh, now we've got our UV map essentially but it's all over the place and it's not scaled it's all rotated right so we'll correct that in the next video so I'll talk to you then okay so if you wonder why uh, my things are all spaced out it's when I unwrapped um, there was a, a a big margin on so let me just reselect this and uh, right click and unwrap again and set my margin down to a sensible kind of value so 0 0.02 perhaps now it's a bit small 0 0.05 there we go okay so now it at least you know looks like a UV map and is in the right kind of space um, but you know we have some rotations and we have some uh, other things to fix so first of all I'm just going to select over here to select this blade and I'm going to rotate it whoops so if I hit the rotate option there I can grab my little handle and rotate it round and when it when I stop it will give me the little pop-up and uh, giving the option to type in the angle so that's good and what else do we want to do well let's just move that out of the way for the moment just pop that over there uh, we have some things that we could consider uh, joining together um, so let's have a look at that so these ends are going to go on to these pieces here this is the cross piece so we can do that if we go into edge mode uh, and select an edge what am I doing select mode edge yes there we go perhaps I have to box select it yep uh, so this edge will connect to one of these pieces so if I right click on it I should be able to join it uh, so where are we unwrap unwrap pin snap mirror straight 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 align align X uh, stitch there we go and you'll see that that's moved and connected to that piece there you'll excuse me with lists I'm not very good uh, it's part of my age part of my uh, dyslexia unfortunately um, so let's uh, right click over this one and we'll right click and stitch again so now I've reduced the amount of seams by adding that in together but you know I haven't stitched so many seams that I'm getting a lot of distortion um, so that's good uh, I haven't really got a clean edge to join these two together so I think that's probably about where I'm done the only thing I might do is this long strip here if I use control, control plus to extend my selection belongs to these two um, and it's kind of a matter of judgment really as to whether you want this vertical or horizontal I'm going to go horizontal so let's go on to our rotate tool there we go somewhere about there and let go and just oh I'm so close uh, and just type in 90 okay so that's a kind of got them oriented in a in a good way uh, but now I want to actually fit them into this area the zero one space UV so I'll just select over them right click and uh, somewhere we have pack actually it's not on my right click it's up here so it's UV and then I'm gonna have trouble with this <laughs> gonna have trouble with the menu again trouble seeing it I know it's here there we go pack islands um, so that's packed them but it has also done a rotate and I don't want it to uh, I want it to be how I how I set it uh, because you know 
I have an idea of how I want that to be. Um, you can leave it on rotate, that's fine, it will rotate things consistently, um, but I tend not to do it. Uh, so I've got uh, quite a nice margin set there, everything's separated out a little bit, and uh, yeah, that's good. So we have a UV, and you know, it's identifiable. You know, I can see which pieces are which. Um, it's quite neat. You know, I could texture this 2D or 3D. Um, I prefer to do it 3D because I'm rubbish at 2D. Um, and we're ready to have a look. So we'll do a finishing off video where we'll compare our uh, projected uh, exported one to this UV one. So what we'll do first is just UV this, uh, it's not UV it, I've already done that. Export this out. So let's go File, Export, Wavefront Object, and this one we'll call uh, Unwrapped. There we go, let's export that out. And when we come back in the next video, we'll have a look at how these behave uh, when we try to texture them. So I will talk to you then. Okay, so when I did my projection map earlier, I realized that uh, I was being a little unfair with it um, because I hadn't scaled the uh, the sword properly like I have for the proper UV. And I don't want to be biased, so uh, let's just do that now. So I've got everything selected and in the 2D view uh, I'll click U and then we use our Smart Project. Now we have two options here, um, I didn't mention this earlier. Uh, if I just use the uh, standard option uh, I get this, which actually looks okay but it's only really using a fraction of the map and these really long polygons are really controlling that. So I could, if I wanted to, use scale to bounds, and this will distort the mesh. It will, you know, stretch it out of uh, proportion, but it will give me a lot of texture uh, density. I'm using the whole map essentially, rather than basically about a quarter. Um, so I'm going to do that, and then we will export. So let's go to object mode, and export this out. So file, whoops, export wavefront OBJ and it's just over on my projection there. Okay so now we can go into substance and have a look at see what's going on. So if I file and new, whoops not open, file and new, I'm going to select my projection first and then click OK. Just going to leave it at 1024 for demonstration purposes. Now, what I want it to have, or what I would prefer to have, is as few seams as possible and for the map to be recognizable. Uh, I've compromised on the scale for this for the distortion, but you know, to get good resolution out of this, I, I kind of have to do that. Um, so we should already be in a better position than we were. If I turn off these channels and give myself a colour, I should be able to paint on my sword without it painting all over the place as we did uh, earlier. And if I paint down there, I see I'm going across islands. Uh, that's not a problem with the 3D um, painting program. Um, but you know, I don't really know. I, you know, I have no connection to this map. I don't. It would take me too long to examine it to figure out what's what, exactly what everything is at, at least. Uh, but it's okay. You know, it's not too bad. We could use it. Um, I, I wouldn't use it to do two D mapping, uh, but for three D, yeah, not too bad. Um, however, there are some things which will. Uh, limit me on this and I'm just going to undo to get rid of all that painting so if I project a, an image onto this uh, which we'll do with a fill layer 
go to my textures and I've got color one down here this camo I'll drag and drop that whoops let's open up my channels first into my base color and that is projecting then onto there and I can move this around and you see as I move it around it's moving weirdly because my islands are not connected and you know that's always going to be the case now you can get around that uh, by simply switching it to a triplanar projection now I can't really move it but I can move it in the 3d view but as I move it around you'll see it's you know it's all moving consistently so not the end of the world by any means but you know it's a again a, a bit of a compromise okay so uh, what else have we got let's delete that and pop another layer in and on this layer I'm just going to add a generator and then just turn everything off except color so on the generator I'm going to use a UV border map and then we're going to tighten it up by reducing the balance and increasing the contrast and now I can see where all my seams are and you know the plane is not actually too bad uh, there are some seams that I prefer definitely not to have um, but you know let's just reduce that distance down there we go um, there are definitely unnecessary seams um, and when you're using a generator or a, um, a function of some description um, it can have unexpected consequences um, if you're you know if you don't get it right you can end up with visible seams and you know I really 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 prefer not to have any kind of visible seam uh, the most visible I have is I can see it because I know it's there uh, but nobody else can if you know what I mean um, so yeah not ideal again minimize your seams and have a recognizable map general principle also um, I use this kind of map this UV map for effects and we'll have a look at the sort of thing I do for that uh, when I import the other one which we'll do now so when I go new and uh, let's pick my unwrapped one and just leave everything the same and discard that uh, we immediately have a recognizable map uh, with a couple of clicks I can know which piece of this is what and I don't have to go off and find you know a dozen other pieces uh, for painting you know it should be as perfect as it's possible to be um, you know everything is going where you'd expect it to and we're not getting any paint through um, for the projection uh, we are going to get some oddities on uh, kind of seams and such like uh, but not nearly as many with the other one so if I drop that base color on there whoops that's not <laughs> that's not a film there uh, let's just drop that uh, camo on there and yeah I can move it around and it is moving in different directions in certain places but on the blade you'll see it looks very consistent on the handle it looks consistent and on the uh, on the handle and pommel it looks consistent it's not like the other one where things were going kind of all over the place all over the model and that's in UV projection mode uh, sorry <laughs> I should have that in fill mode um, sorry no that is a new view projection mode which is as I should have it I don't have to go to a triplanar mode uh, to get that sort of consistency I can use a triplanar mode but it's uh, an option not a necessity um, but more importantly uh, for me personally is if I do our um, UV border in here so let's add this generator in and whoops, turn off all the channels 
and then give it a bit of an adjustment. So I'll take that right down, I'll take the contrast right up. See, I have very few seams. I have seams, that is true, but you know they're controlled and I know them. I know where they are because that's where I put them. Um, you know, there's no kind of ambiguity there. Uh, I know every, you know, every piece. <laughs> I absolutely know. So, you know, it gives me ultimate control. Uh, I know which each of these pieces in this is recognisable. I could give this to somebody else, you know, and they would be able to really interpret this map, you know, and see that this map belongs to this object. And then lastly then, uh, I said that I do, I use these, this map for effects. So let's do that. I'm going to turn that off there and put it on a black mask instead. And then put my, uh, I'm going to select the blade for this. So I only want it to be on the blade. So I'm in the flood fill and I use the UV island. No, I won't, I use that one. So that should have selected me the blade, which it has. And then underneath here, I can right click, add my generator and add a generator in. I want the uh, UV border. Let's turn that to mask and just adjust it down a bit. So take the balance down, can I increase the smoothness a bit. See the smoothness, yeah, it takes it away from the edges and if you have too many edges yeah you're not gonna <laughs> you're not gonna have much luck there uh, let's take the distance down yeah I need to take the smoothness out and adjust with the balance instead I think take the contrast down there we go so now I have a kind of a, a bright edge around my blade so with that said I can immediately change this layer to steel for example uh, or shinier steel well, let's make it aluminium just for fun and then go to our other material and that aluminium is only going in on the edge and below that if I put uh, say steel a steel gun I know it's here I'm having trouble with things yet yeah, steel rough if I drag and drop that below it so now I have a bright edge because I've got that UV template, because my UVs are in a, a nice place, you know, I can utilize them. If they're all over the place, I can't. Uh, okay, so I hope that wasn't too much rambling and I hope you got something out of this. Um, and yes, the next tutorial I'll do for this is actually texturing this sword. Um, so I hope to talk to you then.